Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. In terms of dates, we'll be going from the 6th of August up until the 12th, and we'll also first look at a couple of games that crept out without being in one of these videos for whatever reason. I do just need to say that I am recording this video before going on holiday, by the time you watch it in fact I'll be on my way home, but that just gives you some sort of indication as to how far in advance I had to record this in order to be able to get it out for you. Apologies if that means there are some obvious games missing because their release date has appeared since, but I wanted to go on holiday. <laughs> anyway, with all that said, what's coming out this week? Well, let's find out. Let's start with a couple of games that are already out then, and the first one is Gale of Windoria. This appeared on the eShop just after I'd made last week's video, and as much as I am generally quite sceptical of Chemco RPGs, I must say I really do like the art style of this one. You play as a young adventurer out to purify the sullied sources of power and save a childhood friend. Pretty standard stuff there, and you'll take part in turn-based combat, acquiring skills for your party. The more I say, in fact, the more it begins to sound exactly like a Chemco RPG, but it's relatively cheap at £13.49 for those that are interested. Also already out is Worth Life, which calls itself an action RPG that meets Life Simulator. It's set in a picture book type world where strange incidents have been occurring ever since the crystals of the region lost their light. You play as one of 20 individuals summoned by the king and set off on a journey to save the kingdom. The blurb mentions that as well as your quest you'll be able to raise crops on vacant lots that you come across and build houses for people in need. Sounds like quite an interesting mix, perhaps along the lines of Rune Factory, at least in terms of basic mechanics if not structure and direct gameplay. And last for those games already out is Hunter X. This action-adventure game sees you exploring and making your own route through a large, organically connected world according to the blurb. You can create your own personal fighting style with combos, dodging, guarding and parrying as you take on a host of enemies and bosses. There are over 170 items to find including a number of different weapons and it costs £11.29 or your regional equivalent. Let's move on to the games coming out this week and the first is Two Point Campus. Now before we look at the game itself, this has followed Sega's more recent practice of releasing some sort of bundle version or digital deluxe edition a week earlier than the base game, with this officially being classed as Two Point Campus plus bonus content. However, as far as I can see this time around, the bonus content is a few extra items for the game and a few campus themed items that you can use in Two Point Hospital if you own that game, but the price is actually the same as the base game which releases the week after. If that is the case in all regions, then this is the superior version I guess. So Two Point Campus is the follow up to the brilliant Two Point Hospital which itself had some of the same team that were behind Theme Hospital back in the day. This time round it is a university campus that you are building, but the courses on offer here have a taste of the outlandish to them, such as Night School where you learn how to joust, and Gastronomy where students will build giant pies. Whilst the setting of this one doesn't appeal to me as much as the hospital, I still cannot wait for it as these games are just so much fun. A bit confusing with the bundle and standard versions being priced the same, perhaps that's been changed since I recorded and that was more of a placeholder, I don't know, but if that is the case don't forget the base version is out the week later. Two Point Campus, class is in session 2022. Then we have Book Quest, which is a top-down adventure game as you embark on a medieval journey to reclaim a family heirloom. You'll explore towns and the surrounding wilderness, gathering information from townsfolk and strengthening your character with new weapons and gear. It's an ARPG that alternates between the main top-down perspective to a side-scrolling one at times, and there are puzzles to solve and mini-games to partake in along the way. It sells for a relatively cheap price of £6.29. We also have Cleo, A Pirate's Tale, which is a solo developed top-down pirate adventure according to the blurb. You play as a young girl who has the chance to escape her boring life when she finds a pirate logbook and is visited by a ghost who provides her with a mysterious hint. This came about via a successful Kickstarter campaign and not a huge amount more is given away on the eShop in terms of information other than to say there is a card and dice game called Crack and Fodder also included. From the trailer though it does look to have a heavy Monkey Island vibe and the pixel art does look lovely. 
It will cost £11.29 and it releases on the 10th. Of all time, Kraken fodder. Sorry, old lady. I am not the electrician. Hmm. If the door is open. Then we have Lost in Play, which is a puzzle adventure game based on a brother and sister's adventure stuck inside their own imaginations. The world is full of mystery, unique puzzles and mini games, so says the blurb, and it goes on to say that this is essentially an interactive cartoon. The animation style definitely alludes to that and it will be interesting to see exactly how that works in practice. It's another game that releases on the 10th and it will cost £17.99. The next game is called Arcade Paradise, which I did play actually at the last EGX event in London earlier this year. From the little I played of it, it's an interesting blend of arcade style retro games and first person management as you work in a laundrette but have dreams of opening your own arcade. You must carry out daily duties and chores but you can play the arcade games you install as you progress. Installing more arcades means earning more money and it will be interesting to see exactly how this works as I only played it for about 15-20 minutes. I did spend some time talking to the dev that day who also made the game Vostok Inc, a game I find very enjoyable and this one is out on the 11th and it will cost £15.99 or your regional equivalent. Dominate the high score table and become a legend. a legend! You won't play games that look this good at home until 2021! So don't be a dweeb, come on down to the new expanded mega size arcade The penultimate game for the week is Cult of the Lamb, published by Devolver Digital. You play as a possessed lamb saved from annihilation by an ominous stranger and must repay the debt by building a following in his name. This equates to you building your own cult, collecting and using resources to build new structures, performing dark rituals to appease the gods and giving sermons to reinforce the faith of your flock. You'll be exploring a randomly generated world, fighting off hordes of enemies and defeating rival cult leaders in order to absorb power and assert your cult's dominance. Devolver Digital certainly do have an eye for picking a good game to publish and it will be interesting to see if they have another hit on their hands here. It's going to cost £22.49 and it's also out on the 11th. And finally for the week we have Super Bullet Break, which I assumed was going to be an Arkanoid type game of some description, but it isn't at all, it's a strategy deck builder according to the blurb. It says that there is a cast of colourful characters called Bullets, and each of the 160 Bullets are unique. Finding the best team of these Bullet characters is the way to achieve ultimate victory. There are 7 different game maps with each being designed around a game genre, from dating sims to rhythm games to dungeon crawlers. I must say it's quite hard to get a sense of what it's all about from that eShop description, but it certainly sounds interesting. It will cost £16.99, but you can get 10% off of that price up until launch. So there you have it, another week of Nintendo Switch releases. As I said, I did have to record this about two weeks before the date of you seeing it, just so I could get it done before going away. So of course, that's plenty of time for other games to drop or be announced. So there may be some obvious ones missing. If that is the case, just stick them in the comment section for me. And once I'm back, I'll have a look and make sure any ones worthy of mention go in the following week's video. Don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit to get yourself any of these games, you can buy eShop cards from our website, switchup.gg. Link is in the top pinned comment and the description. And there is also a link down there to Play Asia if you're looking to import anything. Use the link and use the code stated down there and you can get yourself 5% off of an order. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming. <laughs>